John Hammond with PremierGuitar.com, and we're at Bill Asher's booth in uh, Anaheim at the Winter NAMM Show. We've got former Premier Guitar editor for a day winner, Mason Stoops here, who's been in like 50 other videos demoing for a lot of other builders. Great guy. Bill, you have a new series called the Vintage Series, right? Yeah, isn't that a unique name? You like that? <laughs> Vintage Series? Well, you know, I mean, the idea was to take some of my models, uh, you know, and the, the hand-selected tone woods that I use sound really good, but then uh, a gentleman by the name of Hans Baraday came to my shop with some of the, his roasted tone woods, and it really impressed me how opened up the tone happened to be. It increased the sustain and the harmonic response, and it really did sound like an old board of wood that you might have dug out of a lumber mill that was uh, sitting there for 60, 70 years. It really felt like that when I was working with it on the machining, and then when I finished the first instruments, I was really impressed on how the resonance, before you even plug the guitar in, you feel it through the body. And so his company is uh, Tempered Tone Woods. So I'm only using him as a resource for this particular um, roasted wood builds that I'm doing. Okay, so does that mean there are still multiple kinds of woods that he roasts that are available? and? And in, yeah. the, in the series, are there multiple body shapes and all that? Yeah, so what I'm doing with him is he's hand selecting the uh, tone woods for me and putting them through his process. Uh, we're doing swamp ash for the bodies. We're doing okame, which is a wood I found out about a handful of years ago that I love for my lap steels, uh, basswood, and alder. And then the neck woods, we're doing mainly maple, and I might experiment with some uh, mahoganies as well. Okay, cool. And you said this one's swamp ash, right? Yeah, uh, this particular guitar is swamp ash body with uh, roasted maple neck. This one has a ebony face plate, which I do on all my headstock builds just to add a little bit more density to the uh, neck itself. Nice. And you want to tell us about the pickups and the electronics? Yeah, so this is my T Deluxe model, but I added a humbucker in the neck. Uh, it's called my HT Deluxe. I call this is a bluesbucker pickup I'm working on uh, that is very lightly lacquer potted. So it has a little bit more microphonic response because I really do want to pick up the woody tone of this particular style of, you know, tempered woods. So that works real well and it's got my stock pickup, but you can get the the tempered tone wood builds in any of my models, both lap steels, guitars, T-Deluxe, GT3s, my Electrosonics, um, and we, we haven't done a Ben Harper model yet, but I was in the studio with Ben Harper the other day, he's doing another uh, album with Charlie Musselwhite, and I had built um, one of the Mozo guitars for his guitarist Jason Mazursky out of the tempered tone woods. And Ben was floored on how it sounded, and he owns a great ash body one with a maple neck, and he heard the difference in the sound, so we're talking about doing a lap steel for him. As well. Nice. So is that a baritone switch on there? Yeah, that's my V6 control that is made and designed by Don at Stellar Tone. Um, he gave me, his early ones were 16 positions, which was too many. <laughs> that's a lot. And you couldn't, you know, each click was not enough to find tone for me, so I went through his 16 position tone styler and found this, the five positions that I really thought sonically worked well for my model, and then position six is bypassed. And they're just different EQ curves, basically, for whatever pickup combination you have. He won't tell me exactly what's in there. It's, it is passive, though. There's no batteries. It's got a, it takes, like a tone control, it takes some top end off, smooths out the highs. But this actually adds a little bit of mid-range hump to it. So it's almost like a wah effect as you roll it back and forth. So it's more dynamic than a tone control. And I use a Emerson paper and foil cap on my tones. So it's an excellent tone control. So you still have a standard tone on the guitar. All right, why don't we hear Mason play a couple different varieties of sounds? You can start with that, uh, you can start with the veritone. I guess it's not a veritone, the tone styler. Yeah. All right, let's do that.
that has a huge effect. That was all on the neck pickup. Right. Wide variety there. All right, cool. We should move to the next instrument in the Vintage Series, the, the lap steel. Yeah, this is the first lap steel that I've done. Um, Hans was telling me how exquisite he felt the basswood would work. Now, I've never been a basswood fan in guitars. It's lightweight, yes, but it was very soft, and I, I never really felt like it worked well for me as a tone would. He said, trust me, try it. I now, who is this? Uh, Hans uh, Berde at Tempered Tone Wood. Okay, okay. Yeah. So he said, let me get you a piece, try it. So I built this lap steel, and I am telling you, it is amazing. Robert Randolph was here yesterday, and he plugged it in. After 10 minutes, he stopped. He goes, man, is this a hollow lap steel? I said, no, it's just this tempered basswood. So it he gives said, it more of an open sound. Yeah, he, he was going, man, I've been looking for like a 335 semi hollow body lap steel vibe, and this has got it, even though it's not hollow. So. So you're a basswood convert. Yeah. Because <laughs> I, I don't know, I mean, a, a lot of, we've, we've done a million of these videos, obviously, and some builders, rightly or wrongly, I don't know enough about wood to say, but some of them feel like, oh, that's a cheap wood. And there are a lot of affordable guitars that are made of basswood, so sometimes it seems like there's sort of this stigma about it. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I just, like I said, I never connected with it as a tone would in, per se, but. The process here stiffens the cells and makes it structurally more sound and resonant. So for me, I love it. So I'm going to do a series of uh, tempered tone wood lap steels as well in the other line of guitars I'm building. Uh, and I, this is a new body style and a sh slightly shorter scale, 24 inch scale. So, and uh, I'm also like on this one. This is one of my harmonic buckers that I'm doing with Curtis Novak. So oh, nice. This one is really microphonic. Um, I'll show you in a second. So you got to be careful with this pickup. It'll it'll take off on you. But it, it looks really, really cool too. Yeah, thank you. I've been playing with a lot of. I do the. Uh, you covers. did the cover. Yeah, myself. I'm having fun in the shop dressing up pickups. It's also the first lap steel I recall seeing with a half telly bridge on it. Yeah, I like the string through body. Um, in my lap steels. I mean, Ben Harper's now has got the stop tailpiece and two pneumatic, but my er, early lap steel designs and my Model 1 is a string through. Really? I guess I just, uh, just haven't seen those before. Yeah, and I just on this, this particular model, I'm using that bridge. Okay. Why don't we hear Johnny play it? We, we know that uh, so much of tone is in the player's hands, and obviously Johnny deserves tons of credit here, but it really does sound like a vintage instrument. Like it's often lap steels can be just super piercing and cutting, but it's got a nice warm openness to it. Yeah, it's definitely a sweeter tone. Um, I've been playing around with pickup positions. That one is more towards the middle. Um, and then this pickup, yeah, you can literally... You're, you're hearing the wood of the guitar. It's just amazing. But there's no cavity in there except for the pickup and the knobs? Exactly. It is one piece of wood. There's no tone chambers, no transducers or anything. It's just that single pickup. Cool. Well, you want to tell everyone what like the prices on this and the one Mason played? Yeah, the one Mason, uh, the HT Deluxe, those are about 3600 for the roasted series on that. Uh, on the lap steel, I'm still there's a prototype, so I'm not sure, but these are right around 2,200, and I'm trying to get them a little lower than that. We're, we'll see how it prices out with labor and parts, but uh, we should also hear it clean. I know we had the overdrive on. Okay. It here. Why don't we actually before we do that, we'll have Johnny play out. Why don't you tell people where to go online, and then we'll have him play us out. All right, cool. Yeah, you can find me if you're interested in a commission or a custom build or one of my models. You can go to AsherGuitars.com. Uh, you can also call the shop where just me, my brother, and, and my wife, and buddy Jeff, who works for me, my brother-in-law, actually. And we're at 310-821-2888. Sweet.
Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Johnny. Thanks, Mason, wherever you are. There he is. Thanks for watching, guys. And Johnny, hit it.